Good morning out there. I didn't hear you. Good morning. It's a cool morning for a change. And welcome to our service of worship. Um, please stand for the call to worship. Led by Denise. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Show my feet where the righteous walk. Protect me from evil and prod me to fight for justice. Guide me past temptations and compel me to help someone in need. <clears throat> when we are afflicted, give us life, Lord. Give us life when misery dulls our soul. Give us life when sorrow swallows hope. Accept our offering of praise, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lamp to my feet, light to my path, giver of life. Please join in for hymn 741, Guide My Feet, verses 1 through 3. <laughs> seated. I would ask that you take the time to read our prayer of confession and commitment. Reflect on its meaning for you, for our church, for your family, and the country in which we live. Now let us be in prayer together. <clears throat> Good and gracious God, who are we that you love us so well, when there are many times when we find it difficult to love and be loved? How is it that you have given us this good earth, each other, and a future that is in our hands? 
We confess that we have need of your power, wisdom, and grace revealed to us in Jesus of Nazareth. We ask that you awaken the Christ spirit within us, forgive us our sins to purify our intentions and deepen our commitments that we may truly follow in the way of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 82. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O oh God. Judge the earth for all the nations are your inheritance. And continuing on with our second scripture from the New Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. <laughs> We used a uh, video series, classes that we had, called Living the Questions. <clears throat> and one of the ministers who uh, led each section of that video was Tex Semple, a pastor had been in, in Kansas. <clears throat> and he's a great storyteller. And he tells a very wonderful story about when he was a pastor in the Northeast. 
And some of his elders came to him and said, you know, there is this uh, evangelist who has a tent meeting in the next neighboring village. Uh, he's powerful. And we want you to come with us so we can hear, you can hear him. He was very smart. He said, I'll go. <laughs> um, and they went. <clears throat> and this fiery young pastor had filled the tent. And he was going on and on and on again about the power of the Bible. The living word of God, word for word, inspired by God. And he was very passionate about that. And he continued defending the Bible that every word is true and historically the way it's written. And he got all fired up, and at the end of the service, <clears throat> he said, you know, if this Bible were not the living word of God in all it's written, I would take this Bible, and I would take the six from my house, and I'd pour some coal oil on it, and I'd burn it. For if I didn't believe the Bible, every word was the living word of God, I wouldn't be in here preaching. I'd be out there having a good time. That's what he said. On the way home, text reported <clears throat> that none of the elders who asked him to go along said a word. They didn't talk about the preacher. They didn't talk about his sermon. He said, I think they realized that for the preacher, the Bible got in the way of having a good time. For them, the Bible is about showing them the way of life. And they never said another word. What about you? Does this book get in the way of you having a good time? Is this book a guide to your way of life? Careful how you answer that. <clears throat> Be very careful. Because this morning, you're going to pray a prayer like you do every Sunday. One thing I learned when I came here with the Sunday school for the first couple years, every kid could do the Lord's Prayer. I'm not sure they had a clue what it meant. I wonder if we know what it meant. Did Jesus tell you what to pray? If you read the, as you read it this morning, they asked Jesus, would you tell us how to pray? Oh, well, that's a little different, isn't it? Does the Bible act for you a, uh, a transport to get you to heaven when you die? John 3.16 says it clear. According to John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believeth him should not perish, whatever that means, but have eternal life. Well, that wraps it up, doesn't it? I happen to believe strongly that if you, if we do not understand the first century in which Jesus lived and taught, we will not understand the 21st century and what application that is for our lives. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth. Where? As it is in what? heaven. What on earth is that kind of prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
If you lived in the first century, and you were part of the, um, encircled by the empire of Rome, if you had a farm and you couldn't pay your taxes to Rome or the temple tax, you could have that farm taken away from you and you would be destitute. Bread would be hard to come by. Bread was important. It was a metaphor for food, period. Debts. Josephus tells us that the first uprising, when they took over Jerusalem, the insurgents trying to throw out the empire, one well, of the first thing they did was go into the, um, in the temple where all the receipts for debts for all the empire. They burned all that because so many of them were indebted. It's a very political prayer. And you say, well, there you go again with politics. There is no more political book than this one. The Torah gave us the rules for life according to the Jewish people. The prophets wanted to enforce those rules because if not, <laughs> kingdoms would die and be destroyed or overtaken. And Jesus, I have a feeling, may have known this psalm What was the character of your God? What was the character of his God? You read the psalm? Justice, 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 righteousness. It'd be a good question to ask a prospective pastor, I think. What is the character of your God? What's the content of your faith? What is the purpose of your prayer life? What is the function of your church? We could have several seminars and talk about that as parishioners. Could we not? When I was in college, <clears throat> I went to a Christian liberal arts college. And if you Google Percy Crawford, you will discover that Percy Crawford was the first televangelist. I saw that in 53, 54 when I was in high school, and I decided I'd go to his school. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, <clears throat> I had the opportunity as a substitute in the Youth on the March Quartet <clears throat> to travel with him on weekends. <clears throat> I got $10. I thought I was rich. And I was on the, actually on television too, as a substitute. And then I traveled for the King's College gospel team throughout the United States. We had a gospel program every night and twice on Sunday. And that helped pay for my tuition. And one of the songs that we sang, uh, <clears throat> talk about transporting or transforming the world. Uh, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels waken me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Jesus talked about kingdom. <clears throat> it wasn't a kingdom that you go to when you die. He said the kingdom is already present within you. And somehow the Lord's Prayer invites us to participate in bringing about the transformation of the world, that kingdom here on earth. Not when we die. When I went to seminary, I started to change a little bit because I used to pray for those liberal Presbyterians. I did. I did, because you're so interested in works rather than getting saved and going to heaven. <clears throat> and then I became a Presbyterian. <laughs> and my Baptist friends thought I had betrayed them. Some of them. You're going to be part of a church that baptized babies? A 
It's not in the Bible. I think I told you once when I was an interim pastor in a Baptist church right after I was ordained, they had a baptism. Adult baptism. Of course, that's what the Bible says, at least implies. And there was a huge baptismal tank in the Wilmette Church where I was serving just before I left for Europe to study more theology. And um, I was very nervous about that. <clears throat> See, in Baptist seminary, they didn't teach you about, <clears throat> about that. They just assumed you would know that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I went to the back room and put on the, the, uh, the boots. Uh, if you're a fisherman, they go up to here. And I put a robe on. And the lady, I don't know what she had on underneath, but she had a white robe, a little overweight. And we came out, and I stepped down into the baptismal tank, and it was cold. And I took the wrong robe, it didn't have weights. So the rope was <laughs> floating up to the top. I kid you not. And there I am trying to hold it down. She's, I'm helping her down, and she's trying to help me keep the rope down. The choir in the loft is laughing at me. This, Stupid young, just ordained pastor doesn't know what the heck he's doing. So it was a kind of a funny thing. <clears throat> so she gave her testimony. And someone instructed me to instruct her. I have a handkerchief. I put it over her mouth. And I say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then I lift her back out of the water. I can't swim. The water was up to here. It was already leaking into my whatever I had underneath. It was a mess. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling this story, but I'm telling it. Anyway, um, <laughs> let me tell you how it went. <clears throat> I got my robe down. She helped me. I told her, I said, no, just take my hand. I'll put this over your mouth, and you'll be okay. And I put her down in, and she was so heavy. And I said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You could hear it in my voice. I barely got her to stand up again. I was worried that we would both fall in that tank of cold water. But anyway, uh, I'm glad I'm a Presbyterian. I never want to do that again. <clears throat> so let me just try to pull some of these strands together. <clears throat> in 30 BC, after many years of civil war, uh, Rome had this final battle. Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, <clears throat> they're coming down from the north, huge ships. <clears throat> Octavian is waiting, and he defeats them. They go off to Egypt and commit suicide, if you know the story. <clears throat> Octavius then became Augustus, and he had these titles throughout the empire. <clears throat> Son of God, Savior of the world, Redeemer, Bringer of Peace. That was his title. Those things sound familiar to you in the birth stories of Jesus? You bet. Jesus <clears throat> confronted that kind of kingdom <clears throat> with that kind of power that was not in line with the kingdom that was dawning in his ministry. <clears throat> now, if he were John the Baptist and his radical ministry, <clears throat> they kill him, the ministry's gone. Jesus started a movement. He had a franchise. People were all over beginning to talk about the kingdom present in their lives. But he was eventually executed. Why? <clears throat> you can't speak that kind of truth to power for long and not pay the consequences. This world is our home. We're not just passing through to get to heaven and get out of here. The Bible just doesn't want to transport us to the next life. It calls on us be part of transforming the world in which we live. And there's a great divide in our country today. <clears throat> Huge divide. 
not just politically, oh my goodness, but religiously. Between those that think our job is to prepare for the next world and those who are so-called progressive Christians who are working to transform this world in the image of the spirit of the risen Christ. That's a real struggle. So our question, and a question I leave with you, what is the character of your God? Jesus had a passion. His passion was for justice, and it cost him his life. What is the content of your faith? Are you just passing through, get to the next life? Or does your faith somehow instruct you in how you conduct your life, economically, socially, politically, ethically? What is the purpose of your prayer life? What do you pray for? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? As it is, as one theologian said, heaven's all right. It's worth us that has the problem. And what is the function of your church? Good question to ask a prospective pastor. What's the content of your faith? What is the character of your God? What is the purpose of your prayer life? What is the function of the church? Think on these things. Amen. going to burn this, by the way. Okay? Please stand with me and sing, I want Jesus to walk with me, verses 1 through 3, hymn 775. <laughs> peace of Christ be with you. Let us exchange the peace. You've done well. Thank you. Extremely well. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. It kind of comes back. Oh, 
hope you check this balance. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't, I don't think you check my balance. I know that. That's why I said it. It's like I don't take a check for weddings, baptisms, and funerals. Bali writes it down as a church's contribution. Good. That works. <laughs> Peace, He's brother. Sandy. Here I am again. Shalom. Shalom Shavaret. I forgot to tell you another story, briefly. It's a Presbyterian story. <clears throat> um, Billy Graham um, was very much influenced by Percy Crawford, president of the school I went to and traveled with. And uh, as a matter of fact, Billy Graham was, uh, when Percy died in 1960, uh, my junior, senior year seminary, Billy Graham, a huge auditorium, uh, was a speaker there, as he was when I graduated from seminary. But anyway, um, I uh, sang in the, in, in the Billy Graham choirs in, in the polo grounds in New York. That shows you how old, how long ago that was. And in Soldier Field in Chicago. What I appreciated about Billy, not his son doesn't do this, but Billy didn't tell you what church to go to. He would say, after you came forward and, and, and got saved, so to speak, he would encourage you to go to church. And there's an interesting story about a young man who went to a Presbyterian church, and he was all, all excited about being a new Christian. And he happened to like what the pastor said, and he stood up and said, praise the Lord. What would you do if someone did that in the middle of our service? Anyway, the pastor was pretty good. He did up, did up, praise the Lord. And as the story goes, the Presbyterian elder came down and said, excuse me, this is the Presbyterian church. We don't praise the Lord in this church. <laughs> yes. Is that right? He was at my seminary graduation, and I sat next to him, and I, I was a senior class president, and I had to speak after he spoke. <laughs> that was pretty funny. 
but I did. I managed to do it. Anyway, we, wait, I'm going to be in big trouble if I don't announce these announcements, right? Uh, Barbara Hedlund, birthday, June 30th, Thursday. Uh, anniversary, Kent and uh, Janice Jorgens. All right, how many years? You stopped counting, okay. Uh, Leanne and Dennis, where are you, Leanne? How many years? How many years, you and Dennis? 55, fantastic. Um, that's July 3rd. July 1st, there's something here that says, oh, Pastor John Noble has a birthday on Friday. He is 70-something uh, years old. Anything? Oh, one other announcement. Uh, we're going to have cake. So if you want some cake for my birthday, if you don't come to church, at least come afterwards and get some cake and coffee or something. Betty Hedlund is now in South Haven. So I will be there, going there to visit her soon. Uh, any other announcements? Yes. Yes. I told I I told her I hope the check doesn't bounce. So. <laughs> Pastor, I have an announcement. Sure. Yes. Um, Bible school is going to be here before we know it, so pay attention to the back of your bulletin. And please, if you think of any young kids, I don't care if they're Presbyterian or Methodist or if they're nothing, they're welcome. Um, we will have a registration there that night for the kids that don't get pre-registered. So we're not going to turn anybody away. And there's forms back there too. And there's forms back there. The other form back there, which is kind of complicated, we're doing Presbyterian t-shirts. They're going to be royal blue. On the front will be our Presbyterian logo. And on the back will be our mission statement in white. Um, we're getting them to rivalry downtown. If we get an order for 25, the first 25 is they're 10 bucks a piece. Uh, after that 25, anybody can go down and order them anytime, but they're 14. We need the first 25 in by July 13th. We're planning on whoever wants to and is able to wear them and walk in the parade. So that's why the deadline is then. Um, the order form says like small through extra large adult and youth small through large, but if you need an XXL or a 2X or a 3X, X, just write it. So I guess that's all. And those order forms are Newsletter is going out for the month of July. It'll be sent out on Monday or Tuesday, so uh, pay attention to what's in that newsletter. Anything else? Any questions? Yeah. You, you said you told you guys all the story of our anniversary yesterday was our anniversary. Put up with who? Put up with you? You mean put up with you? I have no comment on that. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, August, I will see you on television at the Methodist Church in the morning. Uh, but in the evening, we're going to be worshiping here. And uh, it's a Vesper service, 30 minutes. And afterwards, there's going to be refreshments. And uh, uh, starting the second Sunday of August, uh, evening of August, we're going to do some games, okay? Uh, we may play, I don't know, hide and seek, I don't know, but we'll play some games and we'll have some fun. Probably playing Jeopardy, so put a team together and see how well you can do. Anyway, we're going to have some fun in August. Uh, at the end of uh, July, I will be hopefully, uh, my passport I got it, and we will be traveling to Chicago and then to Amsterdam and going up the Rhine River and uh, winding up back in Basel, where uh, I went to school, 
and my daughter is going with us where she was born, and the first three, four years of her life was also in Basel, when she was able to speak the language and I couldn't understand her. That was kind of fun. Anyway, will the ushers please come forward for the <laughs> Let us be in prayer together one more time. O oh, gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of giving to you, who has given us everything. Bless these gifts of love, increase them, and increase your spirit in us. We may be willing servants so that our community will grow in the knowledge and love of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. This we pray in the name of him who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Turn to him 702, Christ Beside Me, verses 1 through 3. <laughs>
Isaiah said it correctly. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May you take the peace of Christ out with you today to the world around you. Amen.